Hello everybody and welcome to Out of the Short Box. This is Josiah McComas and today we're going to have a uh, little bit of uh, hero history uh, kind of exposing a character that some of you all uh, may not be aware of. Some of you may, some of you may not. Uh, if you're not a big comic book fan, uh, you may not uh, be aware of this one at all. But uh, well, today we're going to be talking about XO Man of War. Uh, the letter X, the letter O, and then Man of War. Um, uh, excellent cr- uh, character created by, uh, well, published by uh, Valiant Comics. Uh, Valiant uh, has a unique history, one that's uh, not uncommon to the comic book world, uh, but is a uh, uh, a unique history in and of itself. Uh, Valiant got its start in the 1990s. Uh, for those that uh, aren't comic book fans, uh, just so you know, the 1990s was a uh, tumultuous time for comic books. Uh, however, it was alt- also a, uh, a business altering time uh, for comic books and, uh, hist- and, a- and a historical time. There was a lot of. Uh, Good things that happened in the 90s. We had a lot of a lot of bad things, a lot of bad things that hit the industry uh, during the 90s. But uh, we also had some good things arise. One of the positive things that arose from the 1990s was we had a surge of independent publishers happen. Uh, Image Comics is the most famous of those that came out. Uh, Todd McFarlane and Rob Liefeld, uh, Jim Lee, who is now the editor uh, at, at DC Comics. Um, uh, those three and some other gentlemen uh, decided that uh, uh, to leave Marvel Comics at the time. Uh, they had problems with how Marvel was paying, how Marvel was treating their original artwork, uh, just uh, a number of uh, issues uh, that the comic book industry has had that, that plagued it for a long time when it came uh, to creator-owned uh, industries. So because of that, uh, they branched off and they created uh, an independent uh, comic book publishing arm called Image Comics, which has promised uh, to uh, always honor uh, creator-owned material, uh, that uh, they would always be creator-owned, that Image would never hold uh, property rights uh, to uh, any said characters. And they've remained true to that today. Uh, Image Comics gave us Spawn. They gave us the Wildcats uh, with Jim Lee. Uh, they also gave us... Um, uh, I think I mentioned Spawn, but uh, uh, they gave us many uh, titles. And, and more common today, they gave us The Walking Dead. Um, but out of, besides Image, one of the other major independent co- comic book arms that came out was Valiant Comics. And uh, Valiant Comics had a flagship character called Exo Man of War. Uh, he was created uh, by a group of te- uh, a team of people that, again, had left Marvel Comics and in, 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 in the comic book industry. He was created by Jim Shooter, who's at one point in time the editor-in-chief at Marvel. Uh, Jim's a unique character. He's one that uh, a lot of comic book fans really didn't care too much for. Uh, but uh, Exo Man of War was created by a team, as most of these characters were, uh, that came out of the gate for these independents. Uh, in 1992, he was created by Jim Shooter, uh, Bob Layton, and Steve Englehart. Um, the, who Exo Man of War is, is uh, his, it's, a, it's a character who the comic book takes us back in time. Uh, It takes us back in time into the 4th century over in Europe, over around the Roman Empire, especially the Germanic area and down into Italy, uh, when we meet a Visigoth named Eric of Dacia. And Dacia was located in what's modern-day Romania. But Eric of Dacia is is who Exo Man of War is, who's the main character. Uh, we meet this, he's a Visigoth, and what are a Visigoth? And you see, this is one reason I love comics. Because the writers will expand our knowledge sometimes. Some people may immediately know what a Visigoth is. But if you're like me, I had no idea when I first read the comic book. Now, I read the comic book years and years ago, but it helped me uh, at that time as I was going through high school um, to understand a little bit of history. And it, it, it perked my interest so I could better know this character who I thought was freaking awesome. And uh, so that's what uh, what I did. 
And uh, when I looked back and I seen the history of Visigoth, I learned about the Goths, G-O-T-H. And they, what the Goths were was they were nomadic tribes that came out of modern-day Germany, uh, Germania as it was known back then. Uh, and if you know your history, uh, especially since we're talking about the 4th century uh, A.D., uh, around the Roman Empire, uh, the Goths were quintessential into the fall of the Roman Empire. Uh, the Germanic people uh, consistently attacked Rome and uh, gave Rome a hard time. And part of them were the Visigoths, and they were called the Visigoths because they were the western branch of this nomadic tribe. Uh, they would co- uh, constantly attack Rome. Rome would constantly attack them. And the Visigoths were successful and did have settlements around the empire. So what happens next in Man of War is we have this setting where uh, where Eric of Dacia is a he's he's anointed to be the future king to be the future king of this empire, and he's he's fighting against Rome with his Visigoths and he's leading him. And then all of a sudden, both encampments, the Romans and the Visigoths, come under attack uh, by aliens. Uh, It's an alien group known as the Vine. And uh, the vine captures Eric of Dacia. They abduct Eric and they enslave him. They enslave him as well as some of his other people. Uh, during this time, the majority of his people die to when it's only just him that remains. Uh, he's uh, remained hostage in their ship, uh, he fell under experimentation, but primarily he was a slave, beaten, and he was subjected to these aliens known as the vine. As uh, with Eric's uh, attitude as a warrior, who, uh, growing up uh, very much like the Spartans, uh, he, he grew up since a babe uh, knowing war and being a warrior. He wanted to escape. Uh, he found his only chance uh, for survival was he, he found what the Vine called uh, the ultimate weapon of the universe uh, that they had uh, in possession on their ship. And uh, it was a suit of armor. It was a, a, a technical, technological wonder, and it was sentient. It actually had its own personality, and they called it Shanhara. Uh, so what happened was Eric uh, eventually uh, escaped by uh, uh, going to the suit of armor, and the suit of armor attached on to Eric. Uh, we later on find out that uh, Shanhara would only attach itself to those that it deemed worthy. This, uh, this piece of, uh, of technology, this uh, weapon, ultimate weapon, would only uh, attach itself to one that it seemed worthy uh, to be attached, and that is the Exo Man of War armor uh, that we call, its name was Shanhara, but when Eric of Dacia uh, puts it on, um, it becomes, he becomes Exo uh, Man of War. Uh, so that's the basic uh, uh, backstory of, of Eric of Dacia and uh, his, his backstory. Uh, Robert, uh, so Valiant Comics was eventually bought by Acclaim Comics in, in the mid 90s. Um, and uh, Exo Man of War continued. They changed the story a lot, uh, significantly. Not a lot of fans enjoyed it. Um, the backstory changed to where. It was a scientist who had discovered uh, this armor that the Nazis were making, uh, and he abducted it, and you know he became a superhero that way. Uh, during this time, though, uh, Exo Man of War um, was known as basically another Iron Man, and they actually created a video game. Uh, it came out for uh, PlayStation, and I know I played the PlayStation one. I think it came out for Game Boy 2 and Sega. I never played those, but it was uh, Exo Man of War and Iron Man Heavy Metal, and you actually played both characters, and both of their uh, storylines came in, but Acclaim Comics had done a deal with Marvel to create that video game. Um, so if any of you all are video game fans out there, if you want to look that one up, um, it was Exo Man of War, Iron Man, Heavy Metal. 
So uh, eventually what ended up happening was uh, a group of investors took back Valiant Comics and created Valiant Entertainment. Um, and when they did that, they knew that Exo Man of War had to be their main launch character. Uh, most comic books publishers have those main characters that carry the weight of their publishing firm. And Valiant Entertainment knew that they had to have a mainline character that was going to carry uh, the blunt of them as they created their newer characters. Uh, so they went with their faithful one of Exo Man of War. And they got a talented writer, one of my favorite writers, who's currently writing for DC. He's currently on the Hawkman uh, 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 series of comic books, Robert Vendetti. Uh, he relaunched the title. Uh, he took Eric back to his original roots uh, and, and really started the story. It's excellent. Um, so Exo Man Wars, uh, main enemies, Eric of Dacia, is basically Commander Trill is his main one of the Vine. Uh, he fights uh, other aliens over time as, as, as the story goes on. Uh, the suit is what really brings it out. Um, it's neat to watch the conflict because you have, um, and I forgot to mention this in, in the story, so what ends up happening is, is Eric is abducted by the aliens and he gets the suit of armor, the sentient suit of armor, and he he escapes the ship and he comes back to Earth. Well, he doesn't realize until he receives the Earth that time has passed because of the number of light years that he has traveled when he finally arrives back to Earth. It's 1,600 years later to the modern day. So Eric of Dacia, who is a 4th century Visigoth, is now uh, put into 20th century America and 20th century Europe. Um, the current comic book has him in, in Europe. Um, so the same place where he was and he's of course he's going to go through shock uh, it's kind of like that Captain America deal when he thought out he's he's introduced to a whole new culture but this is, is, is so impactfully because we have someone from the 4th century who's now being exposed uh, to the technology of uh, the 20th and 21st century um, he comes back and, and he's also trained in certain ways and that's what's neat with the the battle armor that he has with Shanhara and when he becomes Exo Man of War was he was trained as a Visigoth warrior so it's a lot of hand on uh, hand to hand combat uh, a lot of stuff with spears and, and, and those type and swords those type of instruments uh, but the Exo Man of War has stuff like phaser cannons and pulse cannons and uh, he can fly with the suit and he's he's and it's neat to watch this character character uh, learn. Uh, he's a warrior at heart. He's a bloodlust warrior. He goes after the throat. He's, uh, he's very vicious when, when the time comes because he's a Visigoth. And uh, to see him uh, weigh this stuff out and to see the battle. Uh, but it's an excellent comic book. One of the best ones out there. I highly recommend uh, that you get it. Um, we find out later on in the story, which I think is really cool. Um, they haven't elaborated on it anymore uh, with the newer comic books of Exo Man of War, but it was in there um, when Robert Vendetti was writing the comic book, was we find out that Shanhara, uh, the Exo Man of War suit, is actually somewhat of a... I guess you can call it a virus. Um, what ends up happening is once it attaches itself to a wearer, it slowly begins absorbing that individual. Um, it begins absorbing their thoughts, their memories, uh, their actions, and that's what makes it a sentient suit, uh, is that it's passed down through the years, and that's why it's become such an all-powerful weapon in all the universe, is because it's taken bits and pieces of each warrior that it's ever held on to. So it's learned from those past mistakes, from those past battles. So we see it slowly draining Eric, uh, of Dacia, not in a dramatic form because he's still there, but you can see its toll that it's taking on Eric each and every battle that it has. So I highly recommend uh, getting uh, getting Exo Man of War. Valiant Comics does an excellent job, even though they're an independent publishing firm, you still get excellent printing publication. The colors in the comic book just pop. Uh, again, when I eventually get uh, enough funds uh, made here, uh, I'll start doing some YouTube videos as well for you all to see. I want you to see this artwork. I want you to see how beautiful it is. I want you to see the actual production. But if you're in a comic book store, because more than likely that's the only way you're going to be able to get Exo Man of War. I know some of the other comics that I've mentioned before, you can probably pick up at, st at places like Barnes & Noble um, but most of the places that you can only get 
get uh, the the independent publishing arms is at your local comic book shop. So I highly recommend. And again, I want to support our local comic book shops. I love mine. I live here in northern Kentucky, and I go to the Comics to Games in Florence, Kentucky. Great family atmosphere. Wonderful place to be. Uh, the, the owners, if, if they can, if they can spare it, uh, you know, sometimes they don't have enough room because they have so much great product. Um, but they'll even let people play um, Dungeons and Dragons there. Uh, they'll play some of the trading card games they have there. That's why it's called Comics to Games. They literally have every comic you want, and if they don't have it available, they will order it for you. But I've been able to find some of my my rare comics. Uh, they even have my Scud Disposable Assassin on order for me, um, which is amazing, which is a rare comic book that I'll go over eventually in the future. Uh, but they will order it for you if they don't have it. They have amazing statues from sideshows and hot toys. They have the collectible toys from, you know, the DC collectibles. Uh, they got the Marvel Legends. They've got all those toys that any collector would ever want to collect. Um, they have a huge selection of the Funko Pops. If you're into the Funko Pops, they have a huge selection of video games. I mean, I'm sorry, of, uh, of board games uh, like Catan. Um, they have different versions of Risk and Monopoly, but they also have some of the independent games as well. Like I said, I mentioned Settlers of Catan. They have the different versions of it. Uh, they have a ton of Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, they have the manuals. They have the dice. I mean, they have all kinds of stuff D and D uh, fans love. They have the trade paperbacks of the comic books. They I mean they have a whole separate room that is nothing but the trade paperbacks. And they have pinball machines. It's a really awesome place to go. So if you live in the northern Kentucky area, which I know some of you that follow me are my friends. Uh, I highly recommend going visiting Comics to Games. Let them know I sent you. Uh, they know me by name. I have a pool list there, and I'm there every week. But it's a cool place to go. Even if you're not big into comics, they have toys, and they have stuff that you remember from your childhood. You know, they have uh, they've had a new line of the real Ghostbusters uh, toys come back into the store. Uh, they got the old some of the old Ninja Turtle toys. Um, they've got He-Man stuff. I mean, they've got all kinds of stuff that would take you back to your childhood. And like I said, the Funko Pops, pretty much everyone seems to like the Funko Pops. They have a whole wall that is nothing but Funko. And again, if they don't have something that you want, they can order it for you. So go in there and ask them. Say, hey, can, is there any way you can find this for me? And if they can't order it, they know where to send you. Or they have a good idea where to send you. My contests are excellent in that way. So, But go in and pick up a copy of Exo Man of War. Just pick up one copy. Uh, you won't regret it. Uh, even the, the cover... Um, it's not the regular type uh, of comic book type of magazine type cover. And, and there is difference in publication, even with DC and Marvel. Uh, you know, Marvel still has that high glossy paper to where if you're setting under light, it'll still kind of shine back at you. DC Comics went to a more matte type of paper, um, which still brings out the color, uh, but is that old school matte to where it doesn't have any of the, the light glare on it, which is awesome. So that's why I always talk about that. But with, with Exo Man of War, which is an independent publisher, They've gone above and beyond. Uh, their cover is almost, it's not a hardback, it's still a softback, but it's that thicker card stock. And, and uh, the, the, the color still pops on it. The artwork is excellent. Uh, so go check out Exo Man of War by Valiant Comics. I think you'll really like it. Uh, read more about Eric of Dacia, uh, this Visigoth who's trying to uh, survive in today and, and fight battles even with the FBI. Uh, he's a 4th century... Uh, 4th century Visigoth with this uh, alien suit of armor called Shanhara. So I hope you all liked uh, today's uh, uh, history, hero history on Exo Man of War. Uh, I will continue to do more of this like this. I want to do some more of these characters that maybe you haven't heard about. Do you have any recommendations? Let me know. Email me. Uh, out of the short box at gmail.com is the email. You can send me a message on our Facebook page, Out of the Short Box. Again, we would like your support. Uh, you can visit our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash out of the short box. Uh, even a dollar will help me. Even a dollar will help me because uh, I'll save up. I have a special account where I hold back everything for uh, the out of the short box uh, podcast and publication. Uh, this is something I've wanted to do for a long time. I, I want to get the better equipment, and I will. That's my dedication to you to make a better show. Uh, 
to just to, to, to have a better show and to educate you more about comics, talk about the movies, talk about the TV shows, talk about the characters, and just drive you home. And, and so you can see how comic books are, are an excellent piece. They're a fun piece, uh, but we can learn so much more through comics. So until then, I'll catch you in the next podcast.